Would you like to own a genuine Staunton chess set made by GX of London? If so, you're one, one amongst many. And I'm going to go briefly through a, a system of how to recognise and identify a good, well-made Jakes of London Staunton chess set. So what we have here, yes, this is a Staunton chess set. There are a lot of them about, made by many different manufacturers. Some have the crowns on the king's side, rook and knight. People think that identifies a Jakes set. No, the only thing that identifies a set as being by Jakes is where it is stamped. Jakes London on the foot rim of the king. On the white king and depending on the age of the set also on the black king. So, <clears throat> there have been a number of different ways of uh, ideas for how to identify the period that the Jake set came from. They were first made in 1849 and if you would like one of the first flush of the manufacture from 1849 then you need to put your hand very deep in your pockets and you will have to know a good deal more than I can cover in this rather brief video. But basically, first thing you're looking for is do all the felts match? Have we got other pieces added into the set? These sets were bought and played in clubs. The pieces were played next to each other on the tables and quite often after the game the pieces would be added into the wrong boxes. So we've got quite a lot of Jake sets on the market now from the 19th and early 20th century which have, which have got pieces from other sets in. So first of all, if all the felts match, fine, that's a good indication that they're all from the same set. But how do we, do we identify the year? Well, there are systems in place to append a, a chess player's name to the style of knight and so on, that's fine. That's what you want to use, but, but concentrating on just on the knight makes it very difficult. For example, this set <coughs> was originally identified as being from 1900 to 1925, from the shape of the knights. But all these knights, between, this is Professor Sir Alan Fesh's uh, handbook on Jake's chess sets, which is absolutely essential if you're going to, you know, find out a bit more about them. They all look broadly similar, and it may be that they just use different carvers at different times. Um, a closer look makes 1885 to 90 a candidate. So we've got both kings assigned, so it's after 1890. It might be 1885 to 1890, it might be 1900 to 1925. Well, that's quite a spread, 30 years makes a difference. So one thing we can look at is the shape of the cut on the bishop. First of all, we're looking, does it have a complete ball on the top? Because on the earlier sets, the cut was more nearly vertical and the ball was divided quite often split with the almost vertical cut. So here we have the bishop from 1885 to 1890, clearly identical to this bishop with the full ball on top and the very angular cut. So that gives us a clue that this is liable to be the 1890 or very, very shortly thereafter set. We can also look at the rooks as a double check, look at the depth of the crenellations, and the, because later the crenellations got very much deeper, earlier they were very much shallower. Also the pawns can be checked at whether the collars are a very, very thin one that the early sets had or whether it's uh, slightly, slightly thicker, and so on. We can do the same for the Queen's ventilations as well. So look at the whole set. First of all, check that all the pieces match, that they're all from the same set. And one thing to look at, if you have a piece where the felt's loose or come off, is to take a look at the lead weights. The lead weights in stone sets are always screwed in, and they have the marks from an insertion tool, four prongs, sometimes they're very shallow, sometimes they're very deep, depending on how hard 
the tool was stamped into the lead, and then the lead was screwed into the into the set. That's on the, this is this is not a weighted set. Now the unweighted sets like this came, generally speaking, in a slide top box. This may be a GX box, but it doesn't have the label. The label would have been stuck on the top, and there are a considerable study of the different labels and the years of that in Professor Fair's book as well. A lot of work has been done on the different configurations, when they were incorporated, 1802, and that's GX Limited. When, first of all, it was John Jakes, then it was Jakes and Son, Jakes and Son Limited, whether the label says chessman is one word or two words and so on. So you can take all these things into account. But just if you uh, if, if you want to buy a weighted set, it would come in a lift-up lid box like this. This isn't a lift-up lid box. After about 1890, the boxes started to be divided to keep the two colours separated. And the label would be stuck on the inside of the lid in that type of box. Then you can get into the more esoteric area, esoteric area of of the cat and beer boxes and the leather caskets and so on. That's that's really getting rather specialised. But for example, I bought this set. Nice, great big four and a quarter inch set, missing the crosses of the kings. <coughs> White king signed, black king signed. So it's after eighteen ninety. The problem with it was that the pieces are not all from the same set. So what does one do when you've bought a set? Quite clearly the pieces don't match. It's been a club set, there's probably no jiggery pokery going on. It's been bashed about, look at these pawns, poor sorry fellows. Bashed about in a club, mixed up, you know, look, almost every pawn's got some damage. Um, the rooks have, have managed to come through fairly well, but you can quite clearly see that from, from different sets. What I shall do with this, I shall restore this and simply keep it for my own use. It's a wonderful set, but by no means could it be sold as a, as a Jake set with all the pieces from one set. And its value, if it were complete, undamaged with original pieces would be thousands of dollars. In this state it's probably worth a couple of hundred to someone to use as a plain set and that's what I actually use it for. Here we have another set which was somewhat unfortunate in that we bought it as a set. Um, the seller did say he thought the knights might be from different sets and there are in fact one or two pieces from other sets in there, they don't quite match up, you can see the difference in the knights. Again, really where you've got a set with where the kings appear to be different, for example, look at the thickness of the foot ring on the kings. Where you've got royals and major pieces from another set, it's not possible to restore it and call it a, a good set, you've really got to accept it, it will always be a mixed set. And that's what to look out for. One of the things to look out for is not just the damage that these things sustain in, in competition play, but you need to look at, first of all, look at all the felts. Is it signed on the kings? Do the pieces all look the same? Are they all from the right period? If you're going to buy a Jake set, you really do need Alan Fair's book, there's no question about that. It gives you a chance to make sure that what you're going to buy is what you think you're going to buy, a good, complete Jake set. Thank you.